From the time I was 18 to 20 years old, I completed five internships. And you might be like, Katie, how the heck did you do that? I'm gonna tell you, because that's the video I'm making. So just a little bit about me. I'm from Washington, DC, but I go to school in Charleston, South Carolina, which is a city. I'm an arts management major and creative writing minor. Also, I'm on a gap year this year and a lot of my content is about that. So if that's something that interests you, I'll link a playlist down below and subscribe if you want to. I want to start this video off with a little bit of some inspiration for my ladies. This story is one of the main reasons why I've had so many internships in such a small amount of time. Because honestly, after this like night, I'm just not afraid of applying for them anymore. My freshman year, I went to this seminar for like women in business. Uh, I sat in the theater with like all these women and the speaker said a statistic that really freaked me out. <laughs> and basically the, the gist of it was that Women apply for a job if they feel they meet 90% of job requirements, while men apply for the job if they feel they meet about 30%. Basically what I'm trying to achieve by telling you guys this is that you, if you're a girl wondering if you are gonna be able to do a job, don't spend time worrying on it, just apply and see how it goes because opportunities are out there for you to take and you should. So I figured I would tell my story in order. So I'm gonna start with my first internship. When I was 18 years old, I was still in high school. My high school did this program called like Senior Project, which basically means the last like month or three weeks of your high school experience, you reach out to like a local in the community and you basically volunteer as like an intern for them. This was probably one of my favorite experiences. It definitely like sent me on a trip trajectory to like be like do a bunch of more internships. I worked for the arts education department of like this really large like arts and music venue. It was such a cool experience. I got to meet like a couple of Broadway stars, which was kind of wild. Well, I met I met one of their teams. Then um, I also, one of my favorite like memories of all time was uh, my job was to basically go around at an art gallery opening. Basically just went around all night and picked up wine glasses. Not a glamorous job, but at the end of the night, my supervisor, she introduced me to the artist of the exhibit and I got to like walk around and it was just, it was so magical. Next, I was an intern for an art installation. That one lasted about a week. And then my sophomore year, I worked for an independent artist in downtown Charleston who sold like paintings, prints, drawings, home decor, textiles. I went in every day and they would play Taylor Swift and the vibes were just amazing. That same fall, I took like a 72 hour internship as a production assistant on a film crew. That was just like one of the most intense experiences, but I also had a really bad cold, but I had like a headset and I had to hire somebody. It was it was wild. I don't know why they gave me that responsibility, but. And then finally this year, during my gap year, I worked for the collections and curating department of a DC organization. Use your connections. Don't be bashful because I can guarantee you other people are not being bashful about it. And it could be a parent, it could be a family member, it could be, you know, a coworker, a neighbor, and even just like somebody random that you run into and meet and talk to. Like that's how I got my sophomore year internship is that this random girl started talking to me about it. Number two, check your college major website. You don't actually have to go to your major if you don't want to, whatever field you kind of want to get into and try things out. I've actually applied to internships within the communications department website, but usually they'll have a list of pre-approved internships that people have used in the past for credit. But even if you're not using it for credit, still apply. It could be, it could be worth it. Number three, join LinkedIn. LinkedIn, um, they send me like alerts. I don't know why I, I'm not looking for an internship. I don't know how to turn them off, but I still get notifications all the time for internship jobs or go on like indeed.com or just look in your area. Okay, have a strong resume, even if it's crap. Um, So this guy that I uh, was in one of my classes my freshman year, we were talking about resumes for some reason. And he basically worked for a restaurant um, on like the janitorial staff. When he was applying for a different job, he wrote that he was like a waste management associate or something like that. Also, if you have no experience when applying for a job, number one, if you're young, like don't worry about it. And two, you can, you know, 
beef up any sort of skill that you have. Learn how to write cover letters. <laughs> Basically just Google, if you've never written a cover letter before, it's like a very standard like business letter style document. Just go literally to Google, type in cover letter and go to Google images and it'll show you just a bunch of examples. Oftentimes for jobs or internships, they will ask you for a cover letter that's specific. So just kind of get in the habit of like using that muscle of like writing a cover letter because uh, when you're looking for even just a job one day, you're gonna have to write a lot of those. Number three, interviewing. So my best tip is to look up commonly asked interview questions beforehand. I get so nervous for interviews, so I basically just practice to myself. I Google the questions and I just try to like do a mock interview with myself which sounds creepy because it is. No, it's not creepy. It's not creepy. That's normal. Um, it's totally normal. Um, and if you're doing like a phone interview, or a Zoom interview, don't be afraid to write some notes. I mean, don't like write out a paragraph and read it. That would be bad. And finally, print out your resume during the interview because I swear to God, you will forget every single thing that you've ever done in your life. Maybe you're normal, but that's what I do. So having it like right there, or if it's an in-person interview, like having all your stuff ready to hand to the person, very impressive. <laughs> Now that you have the internship, it's gonna go great, okay? Number one, always you just wanna have a good attitude. Be on time, don't complain. Even if other interns are like trying to get you to complain, don't complain. It's my secret to success. And number three is intern work is often clerical. You know, you will be doing the stuff that needs to get done, but nobody really has time for it. So just stay positive. Number two, don't feel weird if you don't have it figured out. It's really easy to feel like you don't have any idea what you're doing when you're in an internship. I read something one time that said that most people don't feel like they fully understand their job position until after a year of working at a company, which I just thought was very interesting because as an intern, like I often feel kind of lost about what my role is. So don't expect yourself to have it completely figured out. What I will say is listen really, really well to your training day and write down notes and pay attention to the work that they want you to do when nobody's there. What I mean by this is you might get like little projects now and then from your supervisor when you show up, but if your supervisor is like not there one day or they're busy, you don't wanna just be like standing there wondering what to do. Just make sure that you know what it is you're you know, you can be busying yourself with, or just, sorry, not busying yourself, working on what you can be working on. Number three, take advantage. Even if you hate the, in you show up to your internship after two weeks, you're like, I hate this. I am never going to be in this job field. You still have three months ahead of you or two months, whatever. Have a good attitude still. Always ask questions and show up. Not, well, not like figuratively show up, but also like, I mean, literally show up too. That, yeah, I guess both, I guess both, yeah. If there's a moment where your supervisor asks you if you have any questions, ask a, a question, ask any question. It can even be a question that you know the answer to. And then that could spur like another question that you can like start a conversation because I swear you are going to learn something from it. And it's so much better to come away from an experience with something rather than nothing, even just like a better understanding of a field you're not gonna go into is better than just like you going and like, you know, doing busy work for, you know, three months. And that, you know, that knowledge can come in handy, you know, maybe in 10 years, you have no idea where you're gonna end up. It's a weird experience, but it's also very empowering. But um, I feel really solid going into my last two years of college. I feel like I have like good stuff under my belt. Subscribe if you're not already, give it a like, and comment down below any of your experiences. I always learn something from them and I'm sure that somebody else could too. So, thanks so much for watching.